Hello and welcome to the 50th episode of STEM with Mr N, where I perform different demonstrations and explain the science behind what we're seeing. As you might be able to tell by my t-shirt, this week is going to be a Halloween themed episode as I show you three different ways of making flying ghosts. Let's check it out. Before I begin, I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who has supported STEM with Mr N so far. As I said in the introduction, this is the 50th video of demonstrations, the Facebook page recently exceeded 5,000 followers and I'm almost at 600 subscribers on YouTube, which is all far beyond what I expected when I started making videos. As you can hear, my voice isn't very strong this week, but it is all of that support I've just been talking about which is encouraging me to power on so this video can come out in time for Halloween. So let's get started on checking out these flying ghosts. For the first demonstration, you will require some white tissue paper, a pen, some sellotape, a pair of scissors and a balloon. I also have a sheet of black card here so that when the ink runs through my tissue paper, it does not go onto my table. The first thing I'm going to do is open up the sheet of tissue paper and from the corner draw out the shape of a ghost and give it a face and then I'm going to do the same from one of the other corners. Next I'm going to cut both of these ghosts out and I'm going to tape the tail of one of them onto my sheet of black card and I'm going to leave the other one sitting loose on my black card. Now I'm going to blow up the balloon and tie off the end. These ghosts are now ready for testing. You will need some woolly clothing to rub your balloon on or you can rub it on your hair. I'm going for woolly clothing because I don't really have any hair that I can rub the balloon on. You want to rub the balloon on the woolly clothing or on your hair for around 60 seconds. Now that I've done that, I'm going to hold the balloon over the ghost which is lying loose on the sheet of black card and watch what happens. It is now time to test the second ghost, the one which is taped down. Since the first ghost flew up and touched the balloon, first I've had to peel that off and I'll again need to rub my balloon on the jumper for around 60 seconds. Now that's done, I'm going to hold the balloon over the head of the ghost which is taped down and watch what happens. You'll notice that the first ghost flew right up in the air and got stuck to the balloon and the second ghost started to rise up towards standing but didn't fly right up because it was taped onto the sheet of card. But what is causing this to happen? When I am rubbing the balloon on the woolly jumper, I am building up static electricity inside the balloon. This means the balloon then has a static charge. The tissue paper has an opposite charge from the balloon now and opposites attract. So when I hold the balloon charged with static electricity above these ghosts, the opposite charges are attracting and that is what's pulling the ghosts up towards the balloon. If you want to know more about static electricity, I've done a video on this previously, so I've put a link in the description for you to check that out. Now let's check out how to make the second flying ghost. For this one, you will require a sheet of white paper, a pen, some sellotape, a pair of scissors, some string, a neodymium magnet, and a paper clip. I'm going to start this just like I did with the previous ghost by drawing the shape of a ghost out from the corner of the sheet of paper, giving it a face and then using my scissors to cut this out. Now I'm going to place my ghost face down on a sheet of black card and I'm going to tape one end of the piece of string and a paper clip to the back of the ghost. I'm then going to tape the other end of the piece of string onto the card. Now that that's set up, I'm going to see if I can make this ghost fly without the magnets touching the paper clip. To do this, I'm going to lift the ghost up in the air and slowly lower the magnets down until I can feel them pulling on the paper clip and then I'm going to let go of the ghost and see if I can keep it flying in the air being held there by my magnets. Thank you. 
You'll notice that I'm able to get the ghost flying in the air without touching my magnets. And I can also make it fly from side to side just by moving the magnets, again without the paper clip touching them. How is this possible? There are two forces at work here. One of them is gravity and the other one is magnetism. Everything with mass has gravity. And the more mass something has, the greater its gravitational pull. In this case, the gravity of Earth is trying to pull the paperclip down towards the ground. Magnetism is also an attractive force, and magnets attract metals. Paperclips are typically made of steel. So in this case, the steel in the paperclip is being pulled up towards the magnets. I'm able to get the paperclip to float in the air without touching the magnets because I've found the exact spot where the pull of the magnets up the way and the pull of Earth's gravity down the way is equally balanced, allowing my ghost to float in the air and move from side to side without even having to touch the magnets. And now it is time for the final fiery flying ghost experiment. Because this one involves using fire, you will require an adult to help you with this and you need to perform the second half of this experiment somewhere that you are not likely to set anything on fire, but it is a spectacular experiment to perform and to watch. For this you will require a square tea bag, a pen, a pair of scissors, a heat proof plate, a lighter, a bag to dispose of some tea in and I also have a sheet of paper here because the ink will run through the tea bag and I don't want it going onto my table. The first thing I'm going to do is cut off the end of the tea bag where the string is stapled onto it. Then I'm going to tip the tea into another bag for disposing of later and open up my tea bag. It has two open ends, so I'm going to fold over one of these ends to close it off. Now I'm going to draw a face at the bottom of the tea bag because this whole tea bag represents my ghost. Now all of that's done, it's time for the fun fiery part of this experiment. I have set up a heat proof plate on top of my cooker and I'm going to stand my ghost up on top of it with the closed off end at the top and the open end at the bottom and you want to open your tea bag out a bit to allow it to stand. Next, using my electrical arc lighter, I'm going to set fire to the top of my tea bag and watch what happens. You'll notice that the fire burns almost entirely to the bottom of the ghost before it suddenly flies away up into the air. So what's causing this to happen? Well, air moves differently depending on what temperature it is. Hot air rises and cool air drops. Cool air also moves in to fill the space left by hot air. In this example, as the ghost is burning down, the air inside the tea bag is getting hotter and hotter and trying to rise up into the air, and also there is a sudden rush of cool air into the bottom of the tea bag, which suddenly lifts it away off the plate up into the air for a spectacular flying ghost demonstration. If you want to know more about air pressure which is involved in this experiment, I've done a couple of videos on this previously, so I've put a link in the description so you can check these out. Well, that's all for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. I did a Halloween video last year as well, looking at making fake blood and glow-in-the-dark drinks, so I've also put a link in the description for you to check that video out. As always, I would like to take this opportunity to answer any science questions you have about any science topics at all. So feel free to email me at stemwithmrn at outlook.com and I'll get back to you with answers to your questions. You can subscribe to the channel by pushing the button here, and I've added links here to the other STEM demonstrations I've done so far, here to my STEM career interviews, and here to my robot review videos. This has been the 50th episode of STEM with Mr. N, exploring flying ghosts.